Watch this point. I had to pay for that wall. I know I would not recommend that at home, but I would recommend the forehand speed up. What makes it dynamic? Let's take a look at this point. Dead dink, stop the tape right here. My forehand speed up is very good because I hold it to the last second. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I stop. If they back up a little, I throw an offensive dink at that inner foot and get a pop up to put it away. If they move away from that sideline, I throw it down the sideline. If that middle is open, I throw it down the middle. And I can dig middle as well to get a pop up. There's so much I can do. Let's see. And that ball was actually going out, right? But if you hold that shot to the last second, it works. And look at this point. Congratulations, you've recognized a dink that floats. What do you do? You see that middle's open, right? You got that player pulled out wide. I would play that middle. Let's see what he does. And he's ready for that next shot, right? He speeds it up and he's ready. He's a 5 0 to pro and he's very, very smart. Chase, you are. Now check out this point. Here is exactly what I'm talking about. I have Chase frozen like a deer. I could do whatever I want. I choose to do this, but I could do that too. Lots of times if you speed it up hard, it's going out. So keep that in mind. Let out balls go. If it's high, let it fly, I know. Now check this point out. And I'm not gonna mention his name because he did something wrong. He recognized a dead dink, right? Andres recognized a dead dink and sped it up. You see that, however, his paddle's down here and on the next shot, he's not ready. He actually hit this forehand roll to get this, but he wasn't ready for it. Question for pickleball lovers everywhere. If the ball's below your knee, should you speed it up? Probably not, right? But if you're gonna speed it up like Andres is doing, should you speed it up that fast or look for an off-speed changeup at the right hip or right shoulder for a right-handed player to get on to chicken wing? <laughs> In my mind, I made a mistake. I hit a good offensive speed up. I hit my spot, right hip, right shoulder for right-handed player. However, this reset is very common. I should be ready for that. I should never miss it, especially playing a 5-0 player. If you're a 3-5 or 4-0 player, I would practice speeding up and then resetting. Find a friend and do this. It really helps. A dead dink is hit. A dink without a lot of spin and speed. It bounces above the knee and Andres has the green light. He speeds it up and he's ready for the next shot. That's what we want. And we have to continue the point to win it, right? And we do. I'm lucky I have no kids because I think Andres is enough. Three, five and four O players, they hit it too hard. They hit through the ball instead of brushing up on the ball. And Chase is a 5-0 player. He's really disciplined. He saw where his opponent was hitting the ball, how hard they were swinging through it, and he let that ball go. That's what you have to do at home, practice in rec play near you. Now, if you don't have a super powerful forehand roll or just can't get over it, this misdirection that AJ hits is pretty amazing. He's looking for the pop-up. He's not trying to win the point. And if you watch tape, he gets it all the time, just like right here. And look what Chase can do with his forehand speed up. Boom, he just blows it by me. And you know what? Hitting at someone, that's a fine play. He's targeting right here and you shouldn't apologize, Chase. You just shouldn't. And take a look at this point. It happened last week. I might not like the ending.
Pickleball lovers, continue watching this amazing point. Take a look at that video. It was really good. How do you hit that forehand speed up? Any tips? Leave it in comments. And Joey, what the heck are you doing? What the heck is he doing? <laughs>